can I allow a Rez Austin Trout fight? It was for the vacant world title, ring magazine title. Um, last champion, only champion, last champion, ring magazine champion at this division was Winky Wright. So it's been a while since this title has been held by any fighter. I don't too much care about the WBC, WBA belts. Those belts mean nothing to me. Um, and start with the end, the scorecards. Stanley Christie Jewel had it 118-109. Um, the other two judges had it closer, 115-112, 116 -111. Um Stanley Christie Duel's card, 10 rounds to two. That was ridiculous. After eight rounds, he had to fight 80 to 71. Basically, he said Alvarez won eight rounds, and then gave uh, Trout two the last four rounds. That was ridiculous. Um, the Showtime panel: Al Bernstein had it a draw, 114-114. Steve Farhood and uh, Malinaji had Alvarez winning by one. Me personally, I thought it was a draw as well with Al Bernstein. Um, I'll just go over my notes because I wrote this all down after round by round. Uh, round one, I thought Trout controlled the action in round one. He set the pace the first round. Um, round two, Alvarez landed more power punches. I thought he won that round. Round three was close. Could have went either way. Um, I'd slightly give the edge. Tavares landed some, he landed the better shots, landed some good power punches, but Trout did control the pace and the action in that round. But could have went either way, but I give it to Alvarez. Um, round three, Trout controlled the pace and the action. I'm um, sorry, round four, Trout landed more punches in round four. Um, round five, Alvarez I thought won that round, landed the better shots. Uh, round six. Trout, it looked like Trout's body work, body shots, was slowing Alvarez down. But after the fight, Alvarez said um, his leg was hurting him or cramping him or whatever the case was. But I, th I thought it was the body work that slowed him down. And he just stopped throwing punches. Um, round 7 was a 10-8 round. He knocked Trout down with a straight right hand. And, but... Trout fought back. <sighs> excuse, excuse me. Trout fought back in that round to close out the round, but it was still nonetheless a 10 8 round. Uh, round 8, again, Alvarez fought good in the beginning, but Trout was busier at the end, so I thought he took that round. Round 9, Alvarez landed the more meaningful punches, so I thought Alvarez won that round. Trout was busy in round 10, so I thought Trout won round 10. Round 11, I thought Alvarez landed the better shots. Round 11, the more meaningful shots. And round 12, because Alvarez's corner, I guess, already felt that he won. He took the corner, told him just keep your defense up and don't go out there and take any chances. So Trout won the 12th round. I thought the fight again was a draw, 114 114. Um, now, as far as um, uh, Stanley Chris to do lose scorecard, 118 109. I don't know what fight he was looking at to have Alvarez winning eight rounds, the first eight rounds. That was ridiculous. Stuff like this hurts boxing because. Um, you have a, you have a fight, two, a fight, a fight with two fighters, in or around their prime, trying to prove themselves, and then you have scorecards like this. Um, me personally, with the WBC rules, I'm against the open scoring, because you tell you tell the scorecard after four rounds, then after eight rounds, the fighter who's losing now has to put himself out there in harm's way. To, to press the action more. Maybe he thought he was winning the fight, but then now you go out and tell him the scorecard. Now he's got to go out there and do more. And he could be, in his heart, get, be feeling that he's winning. So I'm against open scoring. Um, Trout 
Trout threw 330 more punches. He landed 30 more. So this is why I'm trying to understand how is it that Stanley Christodoulou thought that Alvarez won 10 rounds and Trout only won two. Um, but Alvarez is nonetheless the new champion at this division. And um, truth be told, this was all set up for Alvarez from the jump. Um, the fight was held in the Alamo Dome. The national an Mexican national anthem was sung. Then the American national anthem was sung, but by a Mexican nonetheless. I mean, then the rematch clause. If Alvarez would have lost, he would have had a rematch clause. But Trout doesn't have a rematch clause. So, you know, this was all set up. This was all set up for Alvarez. You know, <laughs> excuse me. This was all set up for Alvarez to win. Even if it was close, they would have given it to Alvarez. There would have been basically no way that Trout could have gotten a decision in the Alamo Dome. I mean, look at the last time an African American fighter fought a Mexican at the Alamo Dome with Pernell Whitaker and Chavez. Pernell Whitaker basically shut Chavez out, but yet, to let Chavez save face, they called it a draw. So, with that in mind, that's how that fight was going to go. Basically, to have a 10 rounds to 2, that was ridiculous. But nonetheless, Alvarez is the champion, the unified champion, and he is the Ring Magazine champion at this division. Um, the first since Winky Wright. So, that's my comments on that. Uh, you leave your comments, good or bad, I'll respond to them all. Until next time, next week is uh, Zab Judah, Danny Garcia at the Barclays Center. I'll be there, so I'll watch the fight. And then I'll watch it again when I come go home to see if I see two different fights. And I'll post my comments on that. Um, sorry to everyone, I didn't post my comments on the um, Rigondi Island Donier fight. I was there at the, at the Radio City Music Hall. It was only 22 rows back, had excellent seats. Um, quick, I'm gonna post my comments quickly on that. I thought last year that Donier shouldn't fought, fight Rigondeaux. I thought Rigondeaux had the style to beat Donier. I saw that and I told people this, and exact this is exactly what happened. Rigondeaux just took it to Donier, took everything away from him, and he just beat on him. Did what he wanted. With the exception of the little, uh, little flash knockdown, I think it was the ninth or tenth round. Otherwise, than that Rigondeaux controlled the fight. So now Rigondeaux is now the junior featherweight champion at this division. Um, I think he can move up to featherweight and fight anyone. Donier claim a shoulder injury. Who knows? But I don't know if it's true or not. But I, I'd give him the benefit of the doubt. But nonetheless, he still lost, and he still got a, a boxing lesson displayed upon him. So, leave your comments, and I'll respond to them all. Until next time, everyone.